Hello, it's Hunter with Group 9, covering Chapter 19 this week, which is Enable and Eject Learning into Daily Work. So to start off, this week we're going to dive into how to create a just culture. We're going to be talking about blameless culture, uh, publishing of post-mortem, and decreasing incident tolerance. Establish a just learning culture. Response to accidents is seen as just. This topic is basically meaning accidents are going to happen. There's going to be things in the company that's going to crash. And when these incidents happen and you meet up, you need to make these incidences like a learning experience and not put blame on anybody and just accept the fact that it's, it's going to happen. It's, it's just. And really focus on trying to make sure that, of course, you learn from the mistakes. Of course, there's corrective action uh, taken, or maybe not corrective action, but um, a ways to learn how to not make the same problem happen again or to improve in the future. But in no way should people's jobs be at risk or people be at fear of losing their jobs because then performance would suffer and just this overall not not good way to run a company. Uh, next off we have schedule blameless post-mortem meetings after accidents occur. So this is basically going to be talking about when accidents happen because they will happen uh, you need to conduct or the employees or employer should conduct a meeting or a post-mortem meeting. Um, so this is a blameless meeting where you meet with uh, the group of individuals or well, many people. So there's there's people that were maybe have found a solution to the problem. There's people that were involved in possibly making the situation happen. There's leadership. There's a specific group of people that would be there. Basically, anyone related to this problem and how we could learn from mistakes and also these people that solved it, maybe they can help out and fix the problem. Those type of people need to be there, but the meeting is centered around learning and it's centered around, you know, not blaming anyone, just involving everyone that was there. Um, but to basically talk about um, how it happened, you're supposed to like create like a timeline of the events, kind of look back over it so you can learn from it. It's like a, his it's like a minor history lesson of that one accident and going back in time saying, here's what happened. Let's make sure it doesn't happen again. And let's learn from it and maybe let's add some extra protections to block things from happening in the future. Uh, and so it's very, very good to have these meetings. And it's also, once again, good to have the coordinator, the one kind of leading the meeting, just to always not blame any individual. Of course, point out what happened. Of course, there's going to be people that, there that did make the thing happen. But once again, it's, it's just. It's not, it's not blameful. It's, it's totally blameless. You're part of this company together. It's a it's a group effort. Um, we're learning together. It, we can't wait wait the whole problem on a few developers' shoulders or engineers' shoulders. All right. Next off, we have publish our post mortems as widely as possible. So, kind of what I take from this topic is uh it's kind of like your your notes or your minutes during that meeting uh so basically i would imagine to be some person in that uh that meeting that was taking notes or jotting down just some bullet points that happened uh maybe possibly even like a, a recording i don't think it'd go that far but i would just imagine some notes and uh it's encouraged that the company to be public right to, to read and learn from it because of course there's gonna be people that that weren't in that meeting, you can't have the whole company shut down to be in the meeting. But what you can do is just have the notes posted so other employees can also learn. Say, hey, maybe I'm in the same position. I could have easily made a mistake just like this. Let me try and learn from these notes and see what the problem was, how it was identified, how it was solved. Um, maybe what are some possible solutions and we can take action or not, right? Um, and so it's a very, very important thing for companies to do and not keep them secret, not hide them, but you should basically encourage employees to read from them. And by doing so, you empower your employees to become more knowledgeable, more professional, and 
more likely to prevent problems in the future. Uh, next up, we have decrease incident tolerances to find ever weaker failure signals. All right, so kind of what this is, is trying to expand how you are alerted or how the company is alerted for issues that may arise. And so kind of like once you've been, been in the business for a while and you've identified most of your major problems, and you kind of like problem, not not problem for free, but you're going through less major catastrophes and you're kind of stable. Now you need to kind of amplify those near misses or those close calls and be alerted on those and say, okay, this is a close call. Nothing, nothing really happened, but something almost happened. So how can you recognize that and try and make that even more far away when not even getting a close call? That's kind of what this is talking about. Um, in this section here, and there's kind of goes into some organizational models, standardized model and experimental model. The standardized model is kind of like having a strict uh, formatted or like a scheduled uh, process of doing things. You're given this much on a budget here. Uh, you, you have this much time. You stick to the schedule and you kind of have to stick with it and you can't um, have your own kind of you can't like veer off or experiment and that's exactly what the experimental model does is it's all about experimentation and innovation um, and I believe the the book says to favor the the experimental one um, as it's basically something that can lead to you know innovation innovation is always great um, but that's kind of what they would talk about here in this this section moving on we have redefined failure and encourage calculated risk taking. So a quote I, I like, I'm not sure who it's by, but I remember it. it's uh, it's like every failure is one step closer to success. And that's kind of true in this, this section here where you need to redefine what failure is. If you know failure has a, a negative connotation around it because of course it is failing. You're failing to achieve, you're failing to win. If you're not winning, you're, you're losing. But in this case, failure with that quote in the beginning helps you identify what went wrong and you can evolve from that. Uh, so you don't want to shame. This kind of goes back to the very beginning. You don't want to have any shame going to a person that made mistakes because in reality, that person helped uh, each other understand where where a flaw was in, in their security or how uh, safe an infrastructure was. Just basically these things that that would happen eventually were found sooner because of this individual and they could patch it and fix it. It's like bug testing there, like those beta testers where they can test the program and find it, but they find it during development and, and all that so forth. So it's once you redefine the, hey man, you didn't, you know, you may have caused this, you may have, you know, made this system shut down, but in reality you helped the team, helped the company, patch the hole faster and it's now more safe than ever and so they should not be feared at you know losing their job because they made a mistake if not they should be encouraged of not like not encouraged to make a whole bunch of mistakes but when it happens it's it's a learning experience you know just has how life should be but anyways that's that's kind of that topic and uh, I, I actually like that concept a lot so we inject production failures to enable resilience and learning. And so this topic is really interesting to me. Um, there's this part in the book where it kind of talks about Netflix's uh, kind of system they built, uh, Chaos Monkey. Basically, it would just, you know, randomly take down uh, servers um, just without them knowing, right? They're trying to recreate how it would be taken down and how they could perform it. So you're like, oh, why would their, why would the company want to take down their own environment and risk, you know, pissing off their customers and all that crap. Anyways, in the reality, it, it helps them train individuals to learn how to patch these fixes. And uh, it really encourages a learning environment, right? How, how do you, you know, there, there's these, how do you train employees on on things that rarely happen. So if you make them happen more frequently, but bit, you know, you can fix it and it's in a controlled environment. 
you can help them train better and help them learn how to patch these real life scenarios. It's a very good thing. Um, of course, it has to be done very carefully, right? You don't want to have the, uh, the software, the bot take down the, too much. You know, like I think it's just a couple servers here and there, which is, which is manageable. You want to keep it, uh, keep it at that level and not go overboard. Institute game days to rehearse failures. Uh, so this includes turning off an important network connection to expose problems, powering off a facility without notice to see how fast the system comes up, or providing organizational ability to learn faster than the competition. This is kind of the same topic again, but more like a, a planned a planned event. Um, but in this case, it does say without notice on this middle bullet point, but someone should be aware uh, when it should be happening so they can monitor how fast the team can respond, how fast uh, they can patch their holes and bug fixes. All right, so in the conclusion here, we've talked about enabling safely work environments within the complex systems, uh, talking about detecting problems in a work environment, and when we detect the problems, we need to solve the problems we make solutions available and publish them through notes, you know, from the, those meetings. And we establish a, or we enable and establish a just culture. There's no shaming for making mistakes, only learning and positivity going forth. Uh, thank you so for listening and take care.